international uh, segment of the news review this morning. Well, joining us to discuss the new minimum wage as well as how it affects uh, transparency in the workplace is Mrs. Mwadishi Faith. She is the Executive Director, Center for Transparency Advocacy. You're very much welcome, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Well, we have a new minimum wage uh, in the country. Talking about the uh, agreement between the federal government and NLC on the 70,000 Naira new minimum wage. However, it has been met with a lot of mixed reactions, both coming from the public sector, the private sector, stakeholders, even markets people are, are, are reacting to it. What is your own reaction to this uh, minimum wage? Well, I, I, I think it's a welcome development for me. But um, before we delve into the issue of the minimum wage and also to be able to assess um, different stakeholders' reaction to it, it's important to let people understand what the minimum wage is. So the minimum wage is the lowest you know, legal remuneration that you should pay to your worker. So if you have different workers uh, working with you, the lowest class of your workers should be able to receive at least 70,000. And it's not the first time it's happening in Nigeria. It started way back in the, um, between the 1960s and 1970s, and it came to limelight when we had the dodgy uh, 1973, dodgy windfall because of the um, gains that we made in oil. Yes. And that was when Nigeria became, well, it came out on the world radar yes, as oil, uh, producing, oil producing and receiving the revenue from oil. And I think that's where actually we got it from because we're not ready for that windfall that came and so workers started agitating if government is getting so much we also have to get Together. and then so people were paid but the dodgy windfall was not about minimum wage but it was about people getting fair pay and getting more uh, getting more money so we went into that and in the early 80s at that time the minimum wage was about 125 naira so we continued, and you know, in, in 2011 was when Jonathan increased it to 18,000, 2015, Buhari made it 30,000, and now we are at 70,000. 70, now, the issue of minimum wage, um, you, you look at it, uh, at um, the, the economy, how it is, it, inflation also in, uh, um, is a factor to consider in looking at what people get as pay. There was a time we had this uh, 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 saying that my take-home pay can't take me home. Uh -huh. So you had people who were saying that, and that's one of the things that labor puts on the table. Now we have the removal of subsidy, which affected the uh, 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 standard of living of people, increased the economic mainstay of people, transportation went up, housing went up, food went up, and there's so uh, many crises when you look at it from the different and that was why labor came up to say there is need for this uh, minimum wage and happily they've come to a conclusion a compromise from both labor and government and right now the national assembly is putting a law uh, making a law but one thing about the minimum wage is you also look at what revenues come into the country because you don't just come out and say this is the amount we're getting without really planning uh, right. really planning for it so that yeah. people can get that and uh, you, you see that most times even when you talk about minimum wage it's supposed to affect every worker whether in public service or private uh, the private sector but most times the private sector uh, the late commerce to you know begin to implement that okay public sector will say because the law says that they have the national assembly needs actually to pass a law to support that um, the, the minimum wage for the country yes. and then for the private sector to uh, follow through. But you see that over time, private sector want to consider, private sector is about making profits. It's also about making investment. So they want to go back and look at what is going to happen. So most times when you have a new minimum wage passed by a country, it usually affects most people in the private sector because they will not downsize. They will say we, we may not be able to pay this uh, minimum wage that the government has said, but for us to be able to pay and also get return on investment on what we are having we need to downsize uh, so uh, that's one of the impacts of that uh, and then maybe just yeah. to, uh, the other side um it's also uh, place some kind of it is within the sector for instance the market people will increase their yeah, costs, the cost the, the, cost of of the whole essence of having minimum wage will be defeated because you now have to pay higher for services and you come back to square one. Well, you earlier mentioned that um, the agitation for minimum wage is not just pegging the lowest 
amount of uh, remuneration a worker can get, but rather for a fair pay. pay yes, fair Minimum pay. Minimum wages mm -hmm. should be fair. Yes. But in this, let me ask now, in this situation, is our minimum wage fair? The, the 70,000 naira minimum wage, considering the high rate of inflation, considering the economic realities and the hardship that is ravaging, um, you know, major parts of the country. Okay, so um, when you talk about fairness in looking at the issue of minimum wage, you have to bring it into a context. What is the revenue of the country? Where do you have the resources to do that? What is the population of the people that you need to pay? Because you don't want a situation where you are paying and after a while you are not able to, um, to, pay. to pay. So you are looking at a situation where people had been receiving 30,000. So this is over a 100% increase in that. And if you look at the inflation and the hardship that we have had in the country, it, it, uh, well, the economists will say it's not up to 100% inflation, but the reality on ground will tell you that what we have is almost over 200% what we are suffering, and look at the cost of uh, that. So, if I want to say, um, uh, from the point of view of a layperson, I would say it's not fair, but from the point of view of an expert uh, within, for instance, the extractive sector where I work, and looking at the uh, revenues that we're having and the issues, I would say um, it's well um, in between, about 50%. Another thing you want to look at is what is those people in the public service, those who have elected, what are they receiving versus what the people on ground are receiving. are receiving. So if you put that side by side, you will say... Well, let, let's, really let's quickly put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. You would yeah. agree with me that the margin is quite wide. Yes, it's quite Extremely wide. wide. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why most people will say that in as much as the pre the president has done well by agreeing to the terms of uh, the NLC and you know upping the new minimum wage to what it is now, it still isn't enough. That the the, the take home isn't still enough the to take the Nigerian yeah. worker yeah. home. Yeah. And that's why I, I landed by saying it's not fair. It's not fair in the sense that when you look at the reality of things, there's no free transportation. Um, when you travel to a place like uh, to Switzerland, for instance. Um, transportation is fair. You have public transportation. It's either you have tram or the buses, and it's quite fair. So people don't resort to using other kinds of public transport like taxis and all of that because you have fair uh, uh, transportation. And so, and we are living in a country where we don't have those uh, limitations. Government, you know, overseeing all of this. Anybody can put on. Look at the rents in Abuja. It has gone almost three hundred percent within the last two years. It has gone almost three hundred percent, not just hundred percent. And nobody is regulating that so when you live in that kind of society and and landlords are beginning to ask for two two years three years people are putting properties for 20 million naira properties that used to go for three million four million a year are going for for 20 million and nobody's looking at that and there's no public housing it usually uh, when you do this Another thing that has not happened in, in line with the minimum wage is that government have also not put things in place. We have talked forever about the CNG buses that we made available for workers. I, I, I was going to come <laughs> to that. Talking that about not the CNG <laughs> buses. <laughs> yes. well, eventually, let's let's just hope that the federal government fulfills its promise of bringing in the CNG buses. But still, you would agree with me that when the CNG buses comes, or uh, when the CNG buses come. It, they are not going to be for every Nigeria. They're mainly going to be for civil servants, government workers who will certainly identify themselves with the use of their um, government ID cards, cards to yes. get on these buses. Yes. Where does that leave people in the private sector who do not have access to private cars and you know might also not have a good uh, take on pay so that's that's where it, it's it's all and that's where when i talk about the fact that we don't have a good environment ease of doing business government talks about ease of doing business on paper but practically it's not there you see them say they are giving companies private sector some incentives but when you look at it uh, side by side with the taxes that private sector eventually eventually have to pay every kind of tax police trust fund maritime trust fund they're taking money there's education tax fund there's the NDDC there's in um, uh, not east uh, development and so all of these companies are paying those taxes but they are not giving them things that will help cushion the impact on their investment and all of that so for instance instance in other climbs you don't just put buses for uh, public sector workers only 
to, to utilize. So there's a way you do it so that it is it is actually uh, like for instance in the public sector. I was just talking about Europe and what happens in other clients. You know, it is they even have a card for um, senior citizens. You know, whether you are being a government person, but as far as a senior citizen and they recognize that you actually have free free transportation. Yeah, exactly. So, so yes, yes, you, you actually have free. Completely yes, free. completely free free transportation. It's so, but for workers, you have subsidized rates and all all of those things. So we don't have that plan on ground. It's not working. And how are you going to be able to say oh, this is CNG buses? You want to put a monitor or a supervisor by the bus to say oh this is a civil servant this is not a civil servant in nigeria where everybody can go to the uh, computer print center print and print whatever id I card <laughs> and then you are able to go there so but we need to be able to um uh, be able to regulate you know uh, some of these laws that we have put them in place because it will eventually help to build trust yeah. and citizens would understand that if the if the country is going through an economic downtown it is the responsibility of everybody to be able to uh, to support uh, to support that so you have somebody who was receiving 30,000 and now is going to receive 70,000 what other things have you put in place for instance public uh, housing we don't we don't have that anymore, anymore. we don't have have that anymore even those people who had uh, like for instance when the Guarimpa estate was built it was given to civil servants now they are selling it is even in Guarimpa I'm telling you now that those houses that were built people are putting 20 million naira per year for, for property for rent for properties that we were giving at almost uh, free at free cost so there's no regulation we have people building estates without any form of regulation and nothing selling and selling and then you know because the, nobody is saying this and then you know that this is the impact on this uh, on the society so we need to have laws in place and ensure that those laws are implemented you need to be able to put uh, I, I don't want to call it a tax force because when i say tax force it means that government should go and get some politicians together and then they will begin to uh, which on those that are favorable not favorable to them i don't want to say a tax force but to put a mechanism in place that will help us to implement all of these things and deal with the issue of impunity because even if you save seventy thousand naira there's going to be people who will not pay and yes. nothing will happen to them exactly well talking about uh, the seventy thousand naira and people who would not pay you would also agree with me that a lot of um, employers in the private sector often pay more than what the government is paying as minimum wage, even as it stands with the new minimum wage. You have the private sector uh, employers paying as high as, as 100,000 Naira as the lowest form of remuneration that they give to their staff. But yet, um, there, there was a call recently by members of business owners in the private sector for some sort of support or aid from the federal government to be able to pay the no minimum wage. W what are we seeing here? There's a lot of uh, unclear terms. So you have small and medium scale entrepreneurs yes. who may not be able to even afford the 70,000. Yes. So for those kind of companies, they should give some kind of incentives. Incentives like this issue of transportation, housing, and I don't know how we are going to appeal to uh, the market, the traders in the market, uh, because as soon as this minimum wage comes up, I'm telling you, even though prices are quite high, the prices are going to be like 100%, be because higher. they will say, oh, we need to take our own part of the minimum mm -hmm. wage. But you see, the whole idea that we spoke about, the idea for the minimum wage, uh, not this is what you must pay this is the minimum that you can that pay you can, you can pay. actually pay more than that like for private sector those private sectors who are already paying hundred thousand to utility staff and yeah. all of all of that that that's a good one because they're looking at the impact the 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 the, the um, value that those class of people bring into their business because when you pay people right they actually give you their best yes. and it helps in the outputs it helps in the growth of the company and also builds trust you know uh, amongst the workers and commitment is also taken to a, a, another uh, top notch you know for company you don't have uh, a lot of cases around people who are sabotaging the company but when you're not paying people right you're not treating people right it's uh, it's it, it fuels you know lack of commitment yes. it fuels betrayal and other things from from those uh, uh, workers that are working for you so definitely there are some people like i said those companies within the small and medium scale companies that may not be able to uh, do that but there are some companies that can do 
not even 100% or 200% of that minimum wage. The basic thing is once the law is passed, every person in the country should strive to be able to pay 70000 and above. If you are not able to pay 70000 and above and you uh, you are into business, gov you should be able to negotiate with government so, to give so, you some so kind of, of incentives. incentive. Yes. But you, you, you are the executive director at the Center for Transparency Advocacy. Let's hint on transparency yeah. now. How do we checkmate these employers, especially in the private sector, to ensure that some of them, even though you mentioned small and medium scale uh, you know, businesses, but how do we properly checkmate them to ensure that they pay the minimum wage that has you know, been agreed by the federal government? So the law, once the law is passed, the law is not going to be passed for only uh, public servants. Yes. It's going to be passed for, for all, uh, employers, all employers, employers of labor. So you need to be able to ensure that the law is implemented. There shouldn't be any secret uh, cows when it comes to the implementation of the law because that's the issue we have always had. We have laws, beautiful laws uh, with penalties and all of that, but those penalties are never activated because you want to look at who is who is wearing the shoe, who is in this kind of position, a lot of, a lot of emotions, uh, emotions well. going to you know, interpretation and implementation of our laws. So it's important that we come up front with the people and say this is what it should be. be Beyond that law, there should be an implementation plan, like the implementation framework. Yes. We should actually be able to um, uh, simplify the law so that people would understand. And workers should have uh, some sort of grievance mechanism to report to say this is what is happening. This. Some people will say, ah, Oga, if you said of you to sack me, I can manage the one you are giving me. You know? So you see the workers also colluding with the companies because some companies may begin to intimidate their because workers. So obviously the government will not come and they will not come. So, but the yes. of the, so of we the have the industrial courts, yes. for instance, that should be able to look at some of those kind of cases if there is a proper make, uh, a grievance mechanism. In fact, it should be recommended that every company and every, both private and public sector, should have a very robust grievance mechanism in place. We have um, some uh, uh, so, so that you don't just take cases straight to court but you have those internal me mechanisms that will be able to address all of that and will address the issue of, uh, of uh, transparency. And we expect that the regulators who will be overseeing that are in a position to ensure that whether A is big or B is small, it is a law. You just, the law, they say, is a leveler. You know, you should be able to address all of those issues that come genuinely. And I tell you, once you have addressed one issue successfully, addressed the second issue successfully, you now give the confidence of the people to say, let us use this grievance mechanism in place and see how it plays out. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Faith Omadishi, for sharing your thoughts with this, thank you uh, for on this, this morning. Me.